Welcome everyone to the Capricorn Super Moon Full Moon Ceremony. Today is July 13th, 2022. I'm Kathy Forrest and so excited that you're with me. Let's call in sacred space. Whoops, just stepped on a rock. Ah. All right, let's all take a big deep breath in. And we're gonna drop our grounding cords, send our roots down, down, down into the earth. Feel yourself really ground, root yourself down into the ground. Dive deep into mother's core. Then inhale, draw her energy, her wisdom up through your body, send it up and out through the top of the head, connect with the divine energy of mom above us. And then inhale, draw her divine energy down through your body. Whew. Send it all the way down through those roots into the earth, activate the as above, so below flow. Connecting with that flow, breathing in and breathing out, activate the as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. Moving to the north, we welcome Mother Earth. We give such great thanks to be in a body today. Moving to the south, we welcome water. We welcome clear, clean, current, emotional energy. We welcome love and joy and abundance into our circle. Moving to the west, we welcome air, mind, focus, and clarity, all of our guides, all of our etheric helpers. Moving to the east, we welcome fire, movement, passion, divine right action. Moving to the center, we welcome the divine feminine and the divine masculine and sacred right relationship. We call that beautiful energy down through our bodies and we call up Mama Gaia to pull and magnetize that energy through us. <clears throat> and we welcome our own sweet, extraordinary souls into this circle. We ask that all of these energies be with us, pray with us, dance with us for, mu for our mutual benefit. I hope. Here we go, get up and move. <laughs>
my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. There's so much going on. So we should have done that slide already. Hang on, let me get myself up here. Okay. So because there's so much going on, <coughs> excuse me, I want everyone to just sit, <laughs> take a breath, drop into your body and anchor there. There's a lot of people trying to jump out of their body in all kinds of different ways right now. And you may find it hard to stay grounded. So we just, and that's kind of odd in a Capricorn full moon. Capricorn is the biggest earth energy there is. Um, and this is a super moon. But we, and I'm gonna show you why this may feel a little uncomfortable. Um, but after I tell you what's happening, um, just know this going in. We've been here before. Um, we've crossed the marker six months. You know, we've gone through all these doorways. So um, we're halfway around the wheel. And this time six months ago in January, we were setting intentions similar to the ones we're going to set today for a reason. And so this is a time when not only can we just look at what's on the slide and go, yeah, this is what I want to do, but you can go back. If you come to these on a regular basis, go back to your intentions at the full moon in January. That was the Cancer full moon, opposite of Capricorn. So go back and see what your intentions were. <laughs> you might be surprised. Okay. And I'll give us a little taste of that here in a minute. So let's get this over here. Here's what's going on. At 1.38 today, in just a few, an hour and a half. Is that an hour and a half? No, two, two and a half is close. Um, that's central time, so my time. So it is 11, 12, 1. So it's 11.09. So in about um, two and a half hours, we'll be right in the full, full moon energy. And full moon is always about releasing because the moon is getting smaller. But Capricorn... And there's lots of things. I'm just going to give you the basics and we're, we'll, we will layer in. But this one is all about self-responsibility and being mature and your management of your life and planning and implementation. So making the smart choices. And we don't like our inner child is running rampant right now in the middle of summer on this hemisphere. So in the Northern hemisphere, so we don't even want to think about that <laughs> right now. So just notice when you hear that and feel that what shows up for you, because we've got another Pluto conjunction. And what that means is, I think they're close together. They're, um, across the way from each other. Pluto is having a big influence on this full moon. So they're dancing together. Um, so we've got release and transformation, anything that doesn't serve the highest good. That's what Pluto is about. So he's here to help us look at those intentions we set six months ago. How can we still be the wise elder and manage our lives responsibly and release all of those things that no longer serve us at the same time and have a good time. You know, our inner child needs to play. So have fun doing it. Um, it also represents wealth and power. Wealth can be anything that adds beauty and value to your life. 
So you wanna be thinking about, and we asked, and I'm gonna show you the slide. We asked this question six months ago. What wealth do you desire and in what way do you wanna increase it? And then what are you willing to change or release to make that happen? Because usually that's what's required. Um, it also represents power. Is there any place you need to increase your power? Have you felt lethargic or you haven't been motivated to do anything? Um, what do you need to release in order to embody that superpower? So thinking about self-limiting thoughts, unhealed traumas, um, anything that has to do with shadow work. Pluto also represents soul blended sexual partner and partnerships. So both partnerships, but especially the masculine and feminine soul partnerships, those blended ones. And doesn't necessarily matter what physiological orientation you are, but it's about your inner feminine and inner masculine and how that reflects in your outside world. Um, so you want to need you need to be looking at your relationships, and um, if you want to move into any of this more deeply, how do you make room? How do you decide that it's time, that it's really time to do that work? Really and truly, <laughs> it's like we keep getting these opportunities. It's here again. So the other thing going on is Mercury's hanging out and it's in opposition to the moon. So you want to ask what ideas you need to change or let go of in order to complete your goals. So there may be a belief system you're holding on to that you need to release. Um, there's an, it's also opposing series. So, <coughs> excuse me, same kind of Pluto themes. Um, and then I said partnership. It is um, sextile to Juno, which is the asteroid goddess of committed partnership. So if you're in a committed relationship, what can you do to make it better? Hopefully it feels solid. And if it doesn't, you can make adjustments in this moon. Um, and then also the goddess Vesta. And Vesta, she does a lot of things. She rules the home. Um, but she also supports selfless service. She's... Um, like the energy of Virgo. She's like the mother goddess that manages everything and everyone around her. So how can you make the world a better place? Um, that can be, that could be one of your things you wanna think about. Now, here's another piece. And I think a lot of people, if you're coming to these circles, you may have a tendency to do this. If we, if something, if we set an intention, like we're looking back six months ago, if we look at those intentions, we go, oh man, <laughs> dang, <laughs> I didn't do what I was wanting to do, ow. And I don't feel like fixing it now. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the Sabian symbol that represents this moon is accepting defeat gracefully, do not, beat yourself up. You're going to drain energy from yourself. So you can lose a battle and still win the war. And um, don't waste energy stewing and fuming over loss. It doesn't help. It drains you and it can harm your health. I do not know how I time this so that the only time there's a car going by out here is when I'm teaching. Um, <clears throat> so another thing you can do, you know, you can say to yourself, you know, it is what it is. There'll be another time. I'll get it next time. And that's really what you need to do. You just need to roll with it. It's all in the hands of the divine. And, um, you can inspire yourself with this one. The obstacle is the way. 
So think about what the obstacle is or what you haven't completed and why you don't want to complete it. Why? So hone in on your obstacle and then talk to it, ask it. What's going on here? You know, for those of you that have done Made for Miracles, use the protocol. What am I supposed to be learning? What do I want? If the war is completely and utterly lost, <clears throat> it's time to give up and move on and find something else that you need to put your energy behind. But a lot of times, if you just go, okay, I, I release it. I release it to the hands of the divine and point me, show me what's next. When you do that, a lot of times that energy just rolls right back in your lap and um, you reconnect with the core part of yourself. And really that's what both of these full moons have been about is that vertical axis connecting to the earth and to your emotions, to water and the earth and really anchoring that to the planet. So the other thing you want to think about money, money, money. It's like, and it doesn't have to be money. Anything that you value, Pluto is really good at helping you grow that. And I mean, you know, People talk about how they're afraid, of, you know, oh my gosh, it's a Pluto return. But Pluto, it, the reason that it helps you is because it makes you look. When we, you know, we do everything to avoid the things we don't want to look at. And Pluto makes you do that. It makes you look at those places. And it doesn't always have to be harsh or difficult. It's more just okay you say this is where you want to go how can i help you and let's get some of these old belief systems old chunky things out of the way so decide what kind of wealth matters to you most and ask pluto what's in the way of you having that let it help you now i promised you six months ago the cancer full moon, this is what was happening. So notice how many, how many um, things that we've been talking about are right here. <laughs> and, you know, cyclical, our life is cyclical. This is why um, we keep passing these markers. Juno huddled up against Pluto in Capricorn. Hello, opposes the moon. This asteroid goddess represents committed partnerships, you know, we're at this place again. Um, Ceres, she sextiles the moon. She can help you with your, sad, sh your shadow work, la la. So we're doing it again. And you just want to really um, zero in. So I'm gonna give you some music. I could ramble, but I'm not. I'm going to give you some music and I want you to answer some of these questions in your journal and then we'll do the card pull. So where do you need to be more responsible and wise with your time, money, and planning for the future? What wealth do you desire and in what ways do you want it to increase? Do you want your power to increase? In what ways? What do you need to release? or adjust to embody that power? How are your relationships? Um, are you communicating well? That shouldn't say area, it should say are. Are you communicating well? And what do you need to release to improve these? So let me get us some music. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna give you time to journal with those because I don't want them to kick us off YouTube. <laughs> and they will.
Okay, I know there's a lot on here. I will send um, the slides out with this. So if you have more to do here, you can. We're gonna go ahead and you can keep journaling, but we're gonna go ahead and go through the card, the card pull that I did today. So I'm using, I guess I'll move you all back over here. I'm using the Alchemy Tools of the Profitable Priestess deck. And, you know, I never cease to be amazed. Many of these we've never pulled before and um, they're always perfect. I don't know about you, but groundedness, even though I'm outside right now, I'm spending a ton of time outside. Just because of where we are, it feels like it's hard to keep your stay in your body. So in our fast paced world, it's easy to get disconnected from the earth because of the magnetic nature of our environment and our bodies. This can be detrimental to all areas of our life from health to wealth to relationships. The electrical charge we get from literal contact with the ground itself is scientifically proven to lower stress, to decrease inflammation and improve overall health, not to mention the boost re we receive mentally and emotionally. So dirt time, everyone, where do you need to be more grounded and how can you ground these intentions that we're setting into the physical? It's like that's, so you want to be when we do this, we've called in all of these elements and we've asked for their assistance in circle. And so now they're all sending us their message. This is what earth is telling us, get, get outside and get on the ground. And then water, I pulled abundance for us. Defined as the state or condition of having a copious quantity of something. <laughs> Plentifulness, abundance truly describes the natural state of this planet. So remind yourself of that on a regular basis. That is our state, okay, is abundant. Everything here has the potential to show up abundantly. The natural progression of life on this planet is to beget more life. Um, my spirit guide used to always say the reason humanity has such a difficult time is because they've forgotten this fundamental rule. <clears throat> Everything you plant here grows, period. That's just the truth. So if you don't like what's growing in your life, you have to plant different seeds. So if there are places in your life you don't feel abundant, it's time to prime the pump. Spend some time aligning with the energy and vibration of abundance. Where do you need to remember that abundance is your natural state? Where do you need to open to receive? The miracle key for stimulating abundance is gratitude. Where do you need to be grateful for what's coming tomorrow? So just let those messages sink in. If you want to take notes or get any guidance, connect with water. That's what water is telling us to do. Water is reminding us of how abundant we truly are. And then air is giving us um, some really cool information. It says the air realm is the vibration realm. As such, most of the tools we use in this realm are vibrational, but they don't always have to be relegated to the unseen. There are tangible physical tools we can use to raise our vibration and enhance our creative abilities. Simple tools that elevate our vibration and our spirits, things like music, that's why we dance, sound vibration of any kind, so chanting, <clears throat> essential oils, flower essences, smudging, burning incense, affirmations, all the things. And that's just the short list. Anything you do to elevate your mood, mood 
shifts your vibration and that can support. It's like you want to really focus. So what Air is saying, so we've had, had Earth tell us, get grounded. We have had water tell us, remember you are abundant. And air is telling us, raise your vibe. It's just like, get it up and keep it up and keep raising it because that's how you're going to draw to you what you really want. And then hmm, have the courage to do it. I mean, all those things, all those intentions that you've been setting that maybe you haven't had the courage to make the changes that need to be made. Fire is telling you to just do it. Any creative endeavor takes courage to initiate and complete. It takes courage to look clearly at ourselves and see all the places we need to make adjustments without judgment. You know, just move it out of the way. Don't think about it. Don't place a story around it. Just move it. It takes courage to continue to follow through on tasks and complete them, to bring the creation to completion. It takes courage to face a setback with the confidence that this is just another opportunity for growth. So, no judgment. Where do you need to just amp up your courage a little bit? Be brave. And then I move these around and I move them around for reason. I'll tell you that reason here in just a minute, but I put the money card first. So this is our prosperity card. In this particular deck, there are a few of those. Um, and this one was track your income. This is the number one tool all money teachers teach because it works. And it's so simple. You just get a notebook, you put the date, at, you know, the month, and the year at the top, and you number one through 30 or 31 all the way down the page. Every single morning or night, just pick a time, same time every day, and add up what you earned that day. And even if it's a zero, especially if it's a zero, put that down. Because when I first started this years ago, there were a lot of zeros. <laughs> I mean, I still worked at the store. I got a paycheck maybe every two weeks. So lots of zeros down that page. Now, not so much. And that is because this practice works. When you pay attention to money, money comes to you. So um, do this practice. That's what the prosperity energy of this part is telling, telling you. And, you know, when you get to the end of the month, you can write the total and see if those totals don't begin to increase as you go through the year. And then finally, in the realm of spirit, I pull the divine feminine. It says the archetypal energy of the divine feminine shows herself in a myriad of ways. And she is way <laughs> making her presence known right now. <clears throat> She has many names and many aspects. And I tell people, I always like to think of, you know, there's this big divine feminine archetypal energy that is the divine feminine. But then all of those other archetypal beings that we connect with give us a little aspect of her personality. And so they look like um, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, Kuan Yin, Diana, um, the sacred she, the goddess. I, I mean, all of them, Isis, um, <clears throat> Segment, you know, from one extreme to the other, um, they're all faces of her. She brings divine guidance and assistance whenever you need it most. She can be kind and gentle and loving or fierce and passionate. She'll pull the band-aid off if she needs to. Her energy speaks to a state of beingness and magnetism. She's the perfect complement for the divine masculine energy. So connect to any aspect of her that calls you 
Where do you need her assistance? As the Divine Mother, she's always available and she always provides. So she governs all these circles. She's the one that brings these energies forth and talks through me while we have our class. So it's like you can connect to her anytime and her presence is palatable right now on this planet. You know, we are right in that transformation womb space. So all you have to do is just reach out just a little bit and she's right there. So that is what spirit is telling us to do. Connect to the divine feminine. Now, this is why I moved it, of course. I know of no better way to connect to her than through the priestess process. So um, hang on just a minute. Somebody's unmuted. So I'm going to mute you all again. Um, okay. I want this to go away. There you go. So most of you have been seeing the emails. You've been seeing the interviews. If you've been just proven on through those, I tell you, go back and listen to them. Um, there's going to be new ones this week. Listen to the interviews and then listen in here. And what is she saying to you? And is it your time? We begin July 22nd. Second Magdalene's feast day, and most of you have been to those ceremonies. And this one will be open to everyone once again. So, <clears throat> if this is something that calls to you, this is a very potent, powerful doorway to get in. So, I would way encourage you to do that. Um, today's also the last day to sign up for CCT personal level if you want to do that. Before we dance, I want to give you a minute or two, and I want you to take, I want you to just sit with all that we've talked about, all the cards, all the energies that are swirling around, swirling around you. And then ask, you actually, everyone do this. Put your hands on second chakra, right down there between your hips on your womb space. Ask this question. First thing that comes in, what do I need? Once you get that answer, move your hands up to your heart. What do I want? You can write these down. And then hands to the sides of your face, which is your head. What do I intend? So whatever came up <clears throat> with need and want, how can you give those things to yourself? And is there anything you need to release in order to do that? So take a minute and jot down your intention for this big new moon or full moon, Capricorn super moon energy. This is like major. Thank you.